What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be looking at Azure DevOps and Azure Git and using Azure Git via or from Visual Studio. So for those who don't know what Azure DevOps is, Azure DevOps is a, uh, a service provided by Microsoft Azure. A lot of it is actually free and you could use um, a, a lot of resources for free. So if you don't have an account, Azure DevOps account, I suggest just go and get it. It's dev.azure.com and then you know you can log in and get your account that way. Azure DevOps is essentially a whole host of services under this umbrella called Azure DevOps. Primarily it is a version control system. You can either use Git or uh, VSTS or Visual Studio Team System or the equivalent of that on in the cloud. You get to build uh, CI/CD pipelines, and we'll be discussing the these pipelines in, in another video at some point. Essentially, if you're working on a software project uh, with a, a team of people, uh, uh, whether open source or not, you know, if you're just working with a bunch of friends. I believe up to five people in the team is free. Beyond that, there's some nominal fee per month per person. And either ways, I think it's important for, for software developers today to understand not only Git, but Azure DevOps and pipelines. But today's episode is about Azure DevOps and Azure Git. Git is an open source version control system that uh, is available to you online through many forms such as github which is a separate website github is not the same as git github uses git behind the scenes and azure git uses git the software version control software behind the scenes i find there are many people who know how to use git through the command line but there is a, some sort of a confusion with using git from visual studio it's not the best uh, way to access Git, but certainly, if, I mean, it works perfectly fine for 99.9% .9 of the scenarios. So I suggest if you're a Visual Studio user, you might just use Git from Visual Studio and whether the Git is in Azure Git or is it in GitHub or any other Git repository online, Visual Studio will work just fine. In today's episode, we're going to be specifically talking about how to use, what is Git? and how to use Git from Visual Studio, Azure Git, and the same applies to GitHub. Some history with regards to Git. So Git is an open source version control system developed by Linus Travels from the Linux fame. And it's very popular. And Azure Git is the, the of course behind the scenes they use Git and they're providing a front end that allows you to interact with Git in Azure. A couple of years ago, Microsoft decided to move all of their code base, all of the Microsoft source code to Azure Git. This was the company-wide company, company -wide, um, move initiated by the CEO, a directive from the CEO to get every team in Microsoft to move to Azure Git. And all that was going just fine until the Windows operating system team wanted to go to Git, uh, Azure Git, and they found that Git is not as performant when it comes to large systems. Now the uh, the Windows operating system source code, I believe, is about 350 gigs in size. That was a size may, way longer, the way larger than Git was made to handle. So things were very, working very very slow. Microsoft then took it upon themselves to make a virtual file system that works with Git to improve the performance and a bunch of other magic behind the scenes to optimize which files to pull down, which files not to pull down, what are you trying to do, are you trying to do a merge or a pull or a push, etc. So there's a whole paper on their website on what all they did to improve the performance of Git through this virtual file system. And then of course, because it's an open source project, they pushed that virtual file system code base into Git and now Git has improved because of Microsoft's effort with regards to 
supporting larger source code bases. The next team that was going to come on board, as probably already has come on board to Azure Git, is the Office team. Believe it or not, their source code is larger than the Windows operating system team source code. And so that whole transition has gone smoothly. And what are improvements they have to make in the new file system? They've made that. So Azure is using Git or making Git available to us. And because they're using Git themselves, because Microsoft is using Git themselves, we are going to be seeing a lot of improvements with regards to performance and workflows and stuff like that through Azure DevOps, which is the umbrella under which you can find Azure Git. So <clears throat> in today's episode, as you can see on the slide here, we're going to be starting with creating a Git repo using the Azure DevOps website. And once the repo has been created online, how do we clone that and use that through Visual Studio? That's one way to start. Another way to start is what if you already have a Visual Studio solution that you've been working on, or you just created a new one just now, and you want to now push that into Azure Git for version control? How do you do that? So we're going to be talking, looking at these two different aspects of using Azure Git with Visual Studio. But whatever we discuss with regards to Git and in specific Azure Git also applies to GitHub or any other repository, Git repository you might see online, right? And towards understanding Git, we're going to be talking about certain nomenclature that Git uses, such as pulls, push, sync, and commits, All right? So let's get started. So to start with, I want to talk, take you through the Azure DevOps and the way they, ha they organize their structure because it gets a little confusing. They use certain terms like projects that mean different things to us in Visual Studio and it means different things in Azure DevOps, all right? So in Azure DevOps, we have a notion of an organization and then under an organization, you can have many projects. These are not the same projects as we understand them in Visual Studio. So be careful about that, the nomenclature. And a project can have multiple repositories in my opinion, and the way I see, see that is the repository is synonymous to a Visual Studio solution. So uh, you can have an organization that has many projects and a project has many repositories or can have many repositories. Now you can have many organizations in your account in Azure DevOps, but within an organization, a organization can have multiple projects and within a project, a project can have multiple repositories and repositories are synonymous to Visual Studio solutions, right? So let's take a look at that online. <clears throat> so this is my Azure DevOps account. You can see the URL here is dev.azure.com and, and slash Matlas is my account in Azure. I have one organization called Matlas and this organization has n number of projects. So these are all the, the different projects I have in my Matlas organization. And each project, Azure DevOps project, can then have multiple repositories. So if you look at, let's say, um, IoT projects here, this has repos. And of course, in this case, I put them all under one repo and different projects here. So there's one repo that has multiple projects. But if as you can also look at here, you can see you can add a new repository. Right? There are other projects, for example, uh, let's say this project here, and it has a repository. It's called Movie Service. In this case, the project is called Movie Service and the repo also is called Movie Service. But this Movie Service is a Visual Studio solution. Okay. So kind of keep that in mind. The, the mapping is not quite the same. A project in Azure DevOps does not mean a project in Visual Studio. It does not mean a solution in Visual Studio. A solution is more like a repository, but it depends on how you organize it. So for the purposes of this uh, video, I'm going to create a new project under this organization. So under the Matters organization, I'm going to create a new project. Let's just call it test. The name of the project is something you want to name, how you want to name it, describe it the way you want to describe it. Now, another thing about 
Azure DevOps in regards to private and public repos or projects and contrast that with GitHub, which is again a free online Git facility. In GitHub, you can have n number unlimited public repos. But if you want a private repo in GitHub, you need to pay a certain fee for that. In Azure DevOps, it's backward. You can have n number of private repos in Azure DevOps account. But if you want a public repo, and I think you can have a certain number of public repos for free, but then after that you have to pay for it. So between Azure DevOps and Azure and GitHub, you could have n number of public and n number of private repos. So it's up to you, right? Uh, within a private repo, you can have up to five people you can invite to this project. And so if there's five of you working on a certain project, it's free. So you don't have to pay anything to be able to use the facilities in Azure DevOps, the Git uh, source control facilities, the build pipeline facilities, and so on. The only time you would pay for something, if at all, would be if you deployed that to Azure and it goes beyond a certain limit of your free thing. So you can actually do the deployments also to your free Azure account. It all gets kind of linked up. Even GitHub is linked into Azure DevOps very, very simply. You can pull a repo from, Azure, from GitHub into the Azure DevOps projects. You can build pipelines and things over repos that are in Azure GitHub. Sorry, in GitHub, not Azure GitHub. In Azure Git or GitHub, either ways. In the advanced section here, you'll see the version control system defaults to Git. You can also use Team Foundation version control of TFVC or VSTS, whatever the name is today. And the process could be Agile or Scrum or whatever. I'm just going to leave them alone. I want to use Git here. So I create this project. And once I create the project, you'll see that we can create n number of repos from here. Or once you're in the project, you can go into repos here and you can, so everything you see here is related to the project you're currently in. Now if I go to repos here, I can either clone it to my computer using SSH or HTTP. I can clone it using Visual Studio. We look at some of these things. Or if I have a repository on my local machine and I want to clone it to this project, I can do that using this git command line. But we're trying to stay away from the, the git command line. I, I see a lot of examples of uh, using the git command line, but very few that actually show you how to use it through Visual Studio, which is the point of this episode. All right. So I'll initialize this repo with a a readme, which is like a your like say the home page of your project where you want to describe the purpose, reason, the benefits, everything else you can about that project. That's the readme file. And the git ignore file is uh, we want to pick the one for Visual Studio. You can imagine Visual Studio creates a bunch of, of Visual Studio projects have a bunch of files that we do not want to version control or check in, right? So those are the ignore files. So the git ignore file is such a file that contains all the things that need to be ignored. And in this case, it's a Visual Studio git ignore. So it's very aware of the git ignore file is aware of like NuGet packages that should not be checked in and a bunch of other files is file types that should not be checked in. So that's the git ignore. So we initialize this. And now our repo has been created. The repo has also been called test. So we are in the test project with the repo called test. And I can clone this project to my local machine by hitting this clone button here. And I can say clone this in Visual Studio. And it says open this in Visual Studio. So I'll open that. And once this opens up in Visual Studio, this experience is not the best. It, uh, as you'll see what, why I say that because it's not showing you a solution based view. Is showing you a file system based view, which is not the most ideal. You can select where on your local machine you want to uh, save the source code here. So I'm just going to leave it as the default. So on the test, and I clone this. When you see the solution explorer here, it is showing you, a, as I said, a file system view. It's 
for most of us who use Visual Studio for almost all the work we do, that view is not quite the the view you want. And there's no solution here. So I'll show you how to then create a solution to the existing repo and then push that solution back up to Azure Git. All right. So now in the Solution Explorer, you can see here, you can see this view is showing you in terms of files, but not a Solution Explorer kind of view. Now there's an option here to look at, I'll switch it to a Solution Explorer view, but there's no solution. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, create a solution and then add it to this repo, right? So I'm just gonna close out this solution or this folder over here. I'm gonna create a new project. Let's say it's nasp.net core web application project, which is fine. The default name is fine, but I'm gonna ask it to be created in the test subfolder here. So in this folder. Now what's gonna happen is the solution is gonna be in a subfolder of test called web application one, All right? So you can ask me all kinds of say to place the solution in, in the same directory, but I'm gonna leave this unchecked. Essentially, there's gonna be a sub subfolder called web application one created underneath the test folder. And, oops, did I say back? Okay. Let's say it's a web API project. Now, once the solution gets added, as you can see here, it is already marking these files as files that need to be added or have been added to the repo. Remember, we put it in the same folder. So because we put the solution in the same folder, it's seen as part of that same test repo. And so these files have to be added on. And so, you know, you can just assume this project works and we want to now check it in. Now, before I show you how to check in or do a pull or a push or whatever, I'm going to explain those concepts. I think that's also a part of confusion in some people's minds. So let me talk a little bit about that. Currently we've just done, we create a solution, we just create a solution and we're gonna be pushing this to Azure Git as a new repo. This is how Git works. We started with creating a repo in, uh, on, in the cloud and that repo has a, by default, a master branch and that's called origin master meaning the origin is the cloud right so the origin master is the master branch in the cloud the source code that's in that branch in the cloud that's called as known as origin master and by cloning it let's assume now that we've already done this before and so we are getting the data or the source code from the origin master to our local machine we do a pull right when you pull it, it's the source code is on your local machine. You make changes, you bug fix, whatever you have to do, and now you want to commit. The committing is happening to the local machine, it's not gone to the cloud. So commits in Git happen to the local machine, the local repository. There is a repository being created for your on your local machine that mimics the structure of whatever that repo is in the cloud, right? When you commit, you're com committing to local master. If you're working off the master branch, you can, you can probably should create branches and I'll talk a little bit about that, how, what the methodology of using Git is or the best, best practices. So when you commit, you're committing to your local master. That's not it reached the cloud, which means your other team members have not seen the changes you made yet. To get that to go to the cloud, you have to do a push. So from the local machine, you do a push and you push it to the right branch, in this case, master. Once you've pushed it, you will actually see, the your team members will see the changes in the cloud. Now in the real world, before you do a push, you actually wanna do a pull to make sure that you've got the latest code that's already in master, that's been committed to master. You bring it to your local machine by doing a, by doing a pull and resolve any merge conflicts and anything else that might happen, make sure your code still compiles your test will run and then do a push. So that's not unusual for Git. Pretty much every version control, that's the basic premise, basic process. I'm just highlighting that. 
but keep in mind that committing is happening locally on your local uh, branches and uh, local repo and you have to push it to get there and a sync is nothing but a pull and a push right so when you, when you do sync and there's a feature on in Visual Studio for syncing it's a pull and a push but it's, it's both you depend on what you want to do I would suggest you first do a pull and then do a push to do a sync right so let's go back to Visual Studio now. So I've got these changes I made, a bunch of files have been added, the solutions have been added, all of this has been done. I want to look at my changes, so I can go into Team Explorer and look at my changes here. I'm connected to this repo, so it says test, test, the project named test, and the repo named test. If I look at the changes, these are all the changes that have been made so far. And let's say I want to commit these changes. I'm going to call this, I'm going to put a comment. Always put a comment in your uh, commits to indicate what is in the commit. It's for you, it's for your future selves, it's for your team. In case something goes wrong, to know which commit should be uh, undone, rolled back, it's important to have the, the comments clear enough to understand what exactly is in that commit. And don't mix too many things in one commit either. Okay, so I'll just say initial commit. Now, from Visual Studio, you can do a commit all and push. So remember, commit is happening on the local machine, and then a push is going out to origin, in this case, origin master. And you can see the branch here. It says, this is going into your master branch in the origin. In the real in a real world application, I don't suggest using uh, commit all and push. You do a local commit, and then you do a pull, and then you do a push. Right. So I'm going to do a commit that's committed locally. Now you can do a sync from here. Now the sync doesn't do the sync. Okay. So this is one of my my confusions. I used to fear clicking on this button on this link because I wasn't sure what it did but what it does is it just should, takes you to the, to the sync page and you can get to the same page from home again in the team explorer you can go into the sync thing here uh, page here so this would what this is what the sync is doing now the sync is not actually doing anything until you actually click on something right so you can do a pull and then you can do a push uh, so you can look at you can do a pull so let's do a pull in case something's on the master origin master with of course nothing there so it's telling us there's no changes to pull and once we are let's say in the real world you would have pulled maybe the, there were merge conflicts you would eradicate or mitigate those merge conflicts do a build run all your tests make sure things still working the way it used to work and then do a push so now we do a push and it's only after you do the push and it says it's been pushed to origin master that you will see these changes. Um, oops, let me do. So now, if I refresh this, I'll see there's that folder, web application one folder, and then here is the solution. Okay, so changes have occurred. Now, if I wanted, let's say I go back to my my project, and I make a little change. I'll just put a comment here. Now if I go into my Team Explorer and look at the changes, you see this change there. If you're not sure, you can also go and do, do a, a compare to see what was the difference between what's in the branch, uh, the, the local branch and your current. So if I look at that, you can see this is a diff. The diff is saying this has been added. So it's showing a green which, which has been added. So you can see the diff. This is the standard with uh, any version control system view from Visual Studio. It's not necessarily a feature of uh, Git per se, the, the view. The data is a feature of Git, Git, but the view is not. So I made this change and I want to now commit so I can say um, say fixed a bug in startup or fixed a startup bug 
I do the same thing. I do a commit all. It's been committed. So now I'm going to go to the same page from here. I'm going to do a pull to make sure I get the latest from the same branch on origin. No changes. I can do a push and it goes back to the cloud. Now we didn't actually open that file up before so we won't know that what the changes were but if I look at the file we'll see our changes are in here. Right? Okay. Now this is the git process or the git part of Azure DevOps. Right? Within git when you do pulls and pushes like this you can set up a pipeline that provides gates or uh, within the commit section you can say okay before anyone can commit this code to origin master they have to go through a code review process right so they're called policies so you can set up policies to say okay well i need x person or x number of people or x people to approve of the code review before it gets committed so nobody can just push directly into into master right so these policies can be set up in place you can even run uh, builds and run tests and a whole bunch of other things before the code gets committed. So that's a process or a feature of Azure DevOps that is built around, uh, in this case, Git, that you could set up for your own projects. If you're working in a company or your personal projects, you can set up these pipelines. The whole That whole pipeline aspect I'm going to be talking about in a, another episode, not in this one. In this one, I want to just get you started with Visual Studio and Git. So what we've done this time is we've created the project in the repo in Git. Then, then we cloned it on Visual Studio. We added another solution. We did a made, made a bunch of bunch of changes, and we pushed it back into the origin master. Now I'm going to. I'd like to show you what the, the other way of probably starting. If you already have a project in Visual Studio, how do you start? Right. So I'm going to go back to this test project. I'm just going to, uh, well, I'll leave the test project alone. Let me, I'm wondering, should I delete the repository that's there or what? Uh, maybe I'll delete this repository. I just find it hard to find where exactly to delete the repository. Uh, which probably is a good thing. <laughs> Do you want to delete repositories just blindly? Okay, I'm not sure where that is gone. You can rename it, but you can't actually... Uh, I don't know if you can... Yeah, but well, these policies is where you set up your, your policies for the, in this case, the test repo. Uh, there's a bunch of other policies you can set up. Oops. Okay, let's just leave the repo alone. We'll, when we create our new Visual Studio solution, let's say a pre-existing one, and we want to push it to a repo in Azure Git, I'll show you that process. We just give it a different name, all right? So, <clears throat> in Visual Studio, I'm going to close out this solution. So I don't care for the solution. I'm going to create a whole new solution now. It'll be a ASP.NET Core web application. Now the folder here, I won't use test. So in other words, we're not using the same Azure Git project. So we can push our code into that, but I'm not using the same folder and all that. So let's call it web application two, or let's call it. Uh, YouTube web app. So this is uh, the YouTube web app is going to be a folder under the repos folder. And but this solution or this visual resolution is not in any way connected to the other test repo. Now when we push this code to Azure Git, we can choose to push it into the test project as a different repo. All right. So I'm just going to use the same test project. But because we're saving it to a different folder, it's not going to get mixed up on, under, it doesn't know at this point that it's under any form of version control, which is the whole point. So I'm going to create this 
project we'll pick web api project so we have a solution here but the solution is in no form version control you can see there's no plus signs or anything anywhere else right so this is just, this is just a solution so let's just say you already had a solution right this is this, what i'm trying to simulate that is that there's already a solution and you want to now push it to a git repo either a github repo or an azure git repo it makes no difference and i'll show you how that goes right so once you have a solution you want to push it to git or you want to add it to source control for git there's a button here this is add to source control and you can choose git now this is git it's not saying whether it's github or azure git okay so i wish they would tell you up front because sometimes you don't want to click on this because you don't know what it's going to do when you click on this it's just going to present to you a screen that you can pick and choose do you want to push this in azure git or github all right so you can see here I've, I've got two accounts i've got an azure devops account as well as a github account so show me both and i can either publish it to the git repo and azure devops i can publish it over to github all right you can you can pick and choose or if you have some other git repo you can configure that here and push it there so this button over here was essentially saying git but not telling you whether it's github or azure git or some other git so i'm going to pick azure devops now the screen is a little confusing and there's a little hyperlink that you want to be expanding i'll show you that so that's my account under that account i've got these organizations i've only got one organization in my devops account so it's showing me that now you want to click on the advanced link here because now you can pick your project before that it was going to create a project called youtube web app and in that project would create a re repo called youtube web app it just gets quite confusing so if that's what you want to do that's fine but what if i wanted to push it into that test project so i can pick the project now here yeah, in test my repo name is still youtube web app so we have already have a repo called web application one under the test project i'm creating a whole other repo called youtube web app repo under the test project now I click on that that's done it's been there you can click on it to go see it i already have a browser open so i'm just going to use it and if you look at under the test project this is your readme by the way file over here let's look at repos i can see the test repo has got this data with our web application one but if i expand this i can see that i've got a youtube web app repo here i click on that and that's the other project so it wasn't actually very difficult i preferred this style and i might you know create the uh, azure devops org organization and the the project through the azure devops ui and then from visual studio i know i can define my own repo name and stuff like that so i actually prefer to work that way than to the first way which was first create everything on the in the cloud and then try and clone it back down here it just gets a little confusing so uh, let me just check my slides make sure i've covered all the parts there oh yeah then this the other thing or the next thing i want to talk about is the i guess the best practice with regards to git is called trunk based development and the way that works is these are some of the benefits if you will you know this smaller simple changes fewer merge conflicts simpler code reviews the simpler code reviews because you're making smaller changes and because you're making smaller changes there are uh, fewer merge conflicts but this is how it works you have your master branch so let's say this is time so this uh, x-axis here is sort of time moving on so at a certain point in time yes you start in your sprint or whatever and you're working on a certain bug fix the recommendation is create a branch off of master now the branches when you create branches those branches only belong to you they're by user they're not by for the entire system so you can create a branch give it the name you want i suggest giving it the name of the, the work you're doing if it's a feature you give it the name of the feature 
if it's a bug fix, try and indicate that branch is pertaining to a certain fix because it becomes easier later on or in the future to remove code or, uh, you know, uh, you want to clean things up, something's a mistake, you can roll it back. Right? So you create a branch. Now the branch can be created in the cloud, so origin and the branch, or local and the branch. So you can create a branch off of on your local machine through Visual Studio by going to the branches tab and just say create, create a branch and then you can work on the branch there and then when you commit you can commit to a branch in origin that branch doesn't have to pre-exist and the Visual Studio ID will kind of show you it'll, it'll be it's pretty simple to do that personally I would say create the branch in the cloud and now you got the code there and then you clone that branch on the local machine like we did before work on the local branch commit it to the local branch push it to the local branch and then typically there's a policy associated with that as in you can't directly check it into master but we'll talk about the policies and all later on but if you want it you can commit it to the local to the branch in the cloud and then you can yourself create a pull request to, to pull it into your master branch so every team member is creating a branch for themselves for the work that they're doing they do the work and then as you can see here um, you first do a pull from master to make sure you addressed any merge conflicts that might occur because of somebody having checked in code since you last created the branch resolve merge conflicts from the test make sure things still working as expected and then do a push into master or whatever the branches that you're working on but typically master is the branch that we work on and that's your trunk so trunk based development means you're working off of your master trunk and you're creating branches off of master so with this for features or for bugs you're just creating branches for each of those bits and pieces of work you're doing you do the work you do a pull from master and make sure everything no there are no merge, merge conflicts all the tests are running system compiling and then do a push into master or what are the branches so if you're working on a branch then push it to the branch not to master and then from that branch you can do it online as well you can pull it into master just remember to create a new branch for every new feature or every new work you're doing so you don't keep using the same branch over and over that just won't make sense right so this takes care of very short azure git um, and azure devops and how to use git from Visual studio whether it's github or azure git from Visual studio I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and I will see you next time.